Dr. Hua A. Lim has a global perspective from his being born and raised in Asia, educated in Europe and the US, and work in Silicon Valley. Dr. Lim recaps the concept of multiples begins in 1922 with two sociologists, William Ogburn and Dorothy Thomas, published, It is an interesting phenomenon that many inventions have been made two or more times by different inventors, each without knowledge of the other's research. Dr. Lim stresses the concept of multiples seems radical and weird as it inverts typical Western romantic ideas of genius and inspiration. He clarifies, genius and inspiration do not come merely from the brain of brilliant people. Sure, the mental ability of an inventor is crucial, but as Dr. Lim stresses, the other half of an invention is the existing status of culture. Inventors' ideas are influenced and midwifed by the state of technology around them, the conversational topics in society and the maturity of other science and artisanship they are building on. Since inventors are embedded in the same environment with each other, particularly if they are in the same social and educational class, it increased the chance they will turn their minds to similar problems. As a scientist himself, Dr. Lim says, when you can resolve multiples and connect people with similar obsessions, the opposite happens. People who are talking and writing and working on the same thing often find one another, trade ideas and collaborate. Scientists have for centuries intuited the power of resolving multiples, and it is part of the reason that in the 17th century they began publishing scientific journals and setting for citing the similar work of other scientists. In Dr. Lim's opinion, scientific journals and citation were a successful attempt to create a worldwide network, a mechanism for not just thinking in public, but doing so in a connected way. But he cautions it works pretty well, but not all the time. Dr. Lim switches to the present when we have something that works in the same way, but for everyday people. The internet, which encourages public thinking and resolves multiples on a much larger scale and at a pace more dementedly rapid. Dr. Lim says the internet is arguably the world's most powerful engine for putting heads together. Failed networks kill ideas, but successful ones trigger them. Dr. Lim quickly points out the tricky part of public thinking is that it works best in situations where people are not worried about owning ideas. The existence of multiples, the knowledge that people out there are puzzling over the same things you are, is enormously exciting if you are trying to solve a problem or come to an epiphany. But as Dr. Lim underscores, if you are trying to make money, then multiples can be a real problem, because in that case, you're trying to stake a claim to ownership, to being the first to think of something, to copyright or patent something. Learning that other people have the same idea can be anything from annoying to terrifying. As a scientist, Dr. Lim insinuates, scientists themselves are hardly immune. Because they want the fame of discovery, once they learn someone else is working on a similar problem, they are as liable to compete as to collaborate. And they will bicker for decades over who gets the credit. Dr. Lim highlights the spirit of competition is powerful and fruitful, for it brings out people's best. But it can also be wasteful, because when inventors and creators keep their cards close to their chest, they cannot learn from one another. They wind up making the mistakes someone else has already made.